Hello and welcome to today's live video. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about light and how we can use light to improve all the symptoms associated with adrenal fatigue, including brain fog, just generally feeling feeling tired, you know, that kind of mid-afternoon energy crash, sugar cravings, living on caffeine, that sort of stuff, and also sleep. You know, if you've got adrenal fatigue, you know that it, it, it can affect your sleep. You could probably get the what I call the the dreaded second cortisol spike, which is like late afternoon to early evening, you're like, wow, I have energy again. Where was all of this energy through the first half of the day? I, need, I needed it then. Now I'm trying to wind down for bed and I'm full of energy. That's a really good indicator that you've got some adrenal fatigue going on there. And today we're going to be talking about how we can use light to improve this situation, to retrain our circadian rhythm so that we can change when this cortisol pulse is being released. So we can actually get it at the beginning of the day when we need it so that we can get through the day productively with energy, with clarity and not getting it right before we go to sleep and then not actually being able to sleep or not sleeping very well and having very unrestorative, unrestful sleep. And actually having to like really discipline yourself to not stay up on your phone in bed and not watch Netflix and not just stay up like binging on all the artificial light that we get that we get exposed to. So this is actually really simple. Like there's uh, there's there's a lot of information out there. There's like you can go on YouTube and you can look at like Andrew Huberman, he talks about this. There's there's loads of videos and they're like two hour long videos and they're all like talking about all the science and stuff. Like I've basically watched all of those, digested all of it and I'm just gonna basically give you the information so you know what what to do, what to take from it in literally like 10 minutes. So I'm just going to give you like the summary and the takeaways. If you do want more information on this, we had uh, a guest interview in the Healing with William community. We had Kyle come on and he we, we interviewed him and we were talking all about light and all of these, like putting all of these things into practice in more detail. So if you want more, more information about this topic, you find this really interesting, let me know that you want to come and join the community, get a copy of the recording. And Kyle's also coming to join, so you're going to be able to ask him your questions directly. And he's, he's, a, he's a, an abundant resource for this, this kind of material. So the biggest takeaway is just do, like first step, like what's the easiest thing you can do? When you get up in the morning, go outside and get as much bright light in your eyes as you possibly can without having sunglasses or uh, like windows from your, from your apartment, from your house or like in a car, like light actually coming directly in your eyes. Glasses are fine. They don't, they're okay. They actually focus the light into those points in your eyes. So that's, that's not going to, that's not going to cause a problem, but you don't want like windows and, and stuff like that. The reason for this is we actually have cells in the back of our eyes. Our, our eyes are actually a part of our brain. I know we think of them kind of like as, as a separate organ because they have a, a bit of a different function. They're actually a part of our brain. Like our ner the nerves that connect into the brain, they're, they're, it's literally your eyes are part of your brain. It's like a part of your brain that's exposed to the, to the physical world. So your eyes are basically directly connected to your brain. They are a part of your brain. If you were to like take your skull off and look at your look at your head just without your skull your eyes are so clearly just a, a little extension of your brain so this light going in your going in your eyes starts this whole cascade of like different hormones inside of your body circadian is a if you if you trace this word back it literally just means about a day circadian literally means like about a day about 24 hours so it's not an exact science and and because of that you don't have to look at this as an as an exact science if, if you were trying to do this in like the most elite way possible, you would want to get up like at the crack of dawn and you want to be asleep as soon as the sun has set. You don't have to be perfect to do these things. And I actually tried doing it the, like the perfect way and it made my adrenal fatigue really bad because I just simply wasn't able to get enough sleep in those hours. I do really good with like 10 plus hours of sleep a night and living in the Northern Hemisphere, like living, I'm in Portugal right now, but especially if you live in say like the Northern parts of America, Canada, the United Kingdom, like you, there's just not enough, there's not enough dark hours to actually get enough sleep. And I don't actually like going to bed just when it gets dark. I like to stay up for a little bit and you can get away with doing this as long as you're, as long as you're following these other, these other sort of hygiene rules. So you want to get up whenever you get up, like make sure that you have enough sleep and get up and just try and get some really bright light in your eyes. And uh, like artificial light just isn't bright enough. You really need to go outside. Even if it's an overcast day, the amount of light that you get outside versus inside, even with all the lights turned on, even if they're really bright lights, even if you're looking at your phone on maximum brightness, the amount of, the, the amount of brightness is it's not even comparable. There is so much more light outside. So if you can just go outside, if you, if you don't have that much energy, just sit outside 
if you do have enough energy, like me, I just go for I just go for a little walk. So I just go for a little walk around my building, or I go up up the road and back. Just getting out for like five to five minutes at a minimum, thirty minutes at a maximum, just to get the light in your eyes. This is signaling your brain, which is where this cascade begins. You know, all of your all of your hormones, like your stress hormones, your cortisol, your adrenaline, all these things, they're, they're all basically hormones that are released in response to stimulus. And one of the biggest stimulus is light. So think about if you see a tiger chasing you, like you see it and you're like, oh my God, I should, I should trigger a response. If you're like laying in bed resting at night and you start to smell smoke, all of a sudden your body's like, you feel that, you, you feel those adrenal hormones dump. Like this is your brain responding to sensory input. But it doesn't have to be this, this like massive ad adrenaline response. Just getting light triggers these response in the in a right healthy way. It's going to cause this big juicy secretion of cortisol to happen like really early in the morning or just as you're getting up, which is going to make you feel energized and it's going to make you feel good. Like if you wake up and you feel like groggy or you feel tired or you feel depressed or if you really struggle with your mood in the morning and your mood doesn't feel great, this is definitely for you. Get out in the first the first it, as soon as, as soon as you can do it the better i wake up i'm actually I'm generally in the morning i'm summoned to wake up by my colon saying let's go to the washroom so you have to kind of deal with that first but then as soon as i'm finished i'm i'm out and i'm walking and i've been doing this for for a couple of days the first two days that i did it didn't feel very good because i was actually waking up at like six o'clock wasn't getting enough sleep i've been doing it the last two days and i've been waking up more near my normal time like nine o'clock half nine and then I go out for a walk and then I come home and I feel great. You know, I feel really productive. I feel really energized. And it's literally just getting out a little bit early. Because I normally go for a walk in the morning well, a little while after I get up anyway. But maybe it's like an hour or two hour, hours after I get up. Now I'm prioritizing as soon as I get up, even like before I eat and even before I do anything, just get a little bit of, of light exposure. And it's really, really helpful. This is because it's triggering this response in your eyes and it's telling your body what, what the appropriate circadian rhythm is for your for your for where you currently live in the world. And the reason that this is really important is, first of all, it stimulates this cortisol release, but this is what I found really interesting, and I've noticed that this has improved my sleep too. I was watching a podcast, and, and they were explaining how as soon as you stimulate this light, you, as soon as you see this light stimulus, inside your, inside your, 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 your brain, inside your, inside your body, you will begin to start building up melatonin. And it's like, I think this was, particularly inside your pineal gland. So it's like the amount of melatonin is building and the longer you spend awake and exposed to light, so during the day, the more of this melatonin builds up. So it's like building and building and building and building and building and building through the day. And then you get to a point at night where all the light disappears and you, know, you, you go to bed, you turn all the lights off, all this dopamine is just flooded into your system. And that's what makes you feel sleepy and that's what makes you feel tired and that's what makes you actually able to fall asleep. So the amount of melatonin that floods out d is determined by how early in the day you get to see that first morning light. If you don't get to see, if you see it two hours later, that's basically two hours where your body wasn't producing this melatonin and, and storing it ready for this release when you try to go to sleep. So then when you do get this release, it might not be enough to actually make you feel tired. The other end of this equation, which has more attention to doing the morning stuff is so important because it's when it sets this whole cascade up. The second half of this equation is your sleep hygiene and whether you're exposed to artificial lights and things like that before you go to bed. So personally, I like to play video games before I go to bed. I like to watch a bit of Netflix. Like, there's, I find that really balance, balance in life is like kind of in the middle, you know? Obviously, don't stay up till like one o'clock in the morning doing all of these like naughty things. But also, if you're living life completely sterile, you know, you're just living according to like what is optimally healthy. Like, are you, are you even really living, you know? Life's kind of in the middle, I find. Well, that's where I want my life to be anyway. I want to be able to get as many of the health benefits as I can without compromising actually living a, a livable life. So what I did was just bring my, my Netflix and my video game time and my like just, I'm sure you know what it's like, you know, you're just on your phone, you're just doo -doo 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 -doo, scrolling through, just watching YouTube shorts or, I don't know, everyone has a phone, you do your thing, like whatever it is. Instead of doing that from between, say like 10 o'clock till half past 11, I'm now doing it from between half past eight to 10. So it's like, I'm still, I'm still doing it. I've still slotted it in. There's just a bit more responsibility around understanding that being exposed to those artificial lights should be happening earlier in the day, not so late. Otherwise, it's messing my rhythm up. So I'm bringing it earlier in the day. And you can look at using blue blockers. You can look at using like the red or the amber glasses. That could help. 
I'm not using them and I'm still feeling really good. I'm actually feeling way better than I have literally just from these two small changes. So just bringing my artificial light exposure back about an hour and a half and just getting up and getting some morning sun literally within the first, well, I go to the toilet first. So I would say within the first 10 to 15 minutes of, of getting up, just go for a little walk outside. It, it's amazing. Super easy. You can go and watch like all of the podcasts. You can go and watch all the neuroscience lectures. They're basically going to tell you how to do it in a more perfect way. I'm trying to give it to you in a reasonable way that most people will be able to do. And it's not asking you too much. I really think that healing is supposed to be so stupidly simple that you can't get it wrong. You don't have to do it perfectly. I'm trying to give it to you in a way that anybody could do it. It's not too much of a big ask. You've probably got so many other things you're doing for healing. You know, you've got your diet, you've got your supplements, you've got all the therapies you're doing. You've got to think positive and you've got to do your trauma work and you've got to do this and that. And it's like, if you give you one extra thing, you're just going to be like, oh, I've had enough, just go away. I don't want to do it anymore. So I want to make it super easy for you. So all you have to do is when you wake up, like just whenever you naturally are awake, just go outside for a little while. You don't even have to be walking, literally just, you could even like, for me, I don't have a garden, I live in an apartment. So I could just go and stand out on my, like where the balcony is, open the windows, just stand there for five minutes and look outside. That's it. Even like this morning, I was a bit lazy. So I, I just opened all my windows up. I sat in front of it and I was on my phone, but I had all of the light coming into my face. That, that is better than not doing it at all. So yeah, it would be better to go outside, but I had appointments and stuff. So it was kind of hard for me to jingle it all around. And just don't use artificial light too close to going to bed. So you can still use it close to going to bed, just bring it back a little bit. So if you're using it like me from between say 10 o'clock till half past 11, just bring it back an hour and a half or so. So then it's half past eight till 10 and then it's better. You know, is it perfect? No. Is it affecting my circadian rhythm in a negative way? Maybe. Do I really care? No, it's fine. You don't have to be perfect. It's good enough. My sleep's way better. My energy's way better. My mood is way better. This is good enough for me. And, I, and it's sustainable. You know, if you do it the perfect way, you'd like, oh yeah, well, this is great. You do it for two weeks and then you stop doing it. This is sustainable. I'll be able to do this forever. So this is great. I love it. So that's basically everything for today. This is my summary from all of my research on light in the last two weeks, including hosting a workshop in the Healing with William community. If you want to grab a recording of that and come and join us and join all of the guest interviews and the classes that I teach just for 30 euros a month, let me know. It's an amazing community. It's fantastic. We actually have an offer at the minute going on where you can get a one week free trial. So just let me know if you want to grab that free trial. You get to watch all of the previous recordings. You get to come join the group chat. You get to ask all your questions. And if you don't like it, you can just leave and it's fine because I know no one's going to want to leave because it's such an amazing group. That's why I wanted to do the free trial because you'll come and you'll never leave. We'll have you forever. <laughs> So let me know if you want to come and join. It really is an amazing community full of people that are just literally putting in the work, healing. It's not, when, when, it's, when it's a support group, you might think that it's full of people just like whinging and complaining about their symptoms and stuff. It's not like that at all. It's people like, I've got this going on. What can I do? Oh, I like that supplement. Have you got any suggestions? Oh, this really worked for me. Maybe you want to try this. Like, it's really, really cool. So if you have any interest, please just let me know. I'd be more than happy to shoot you over an invite. And if you have any questions for me, please let me know. That's everything. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.